Are you happy with what you have? Yesterday I was speaking about coveting, wanting what someone else has got, wanting more than we have now, moaning because someone else has a slightly larger slice of the cake than we do. Trying to be the first in the queue to make sure we get the best of what everyone's waiting for. Coveting, it's usually a sign that we are dissatisfied with what we have now. We want more. And the Bible, it doesn't teach us to get the most we can or to make sure we've got the best of everything. It doesn't teach us to try and pursue, to seek after what we don't have as if just having something else will satisfy. The Bible teaches us to be content with what we do have. Here's today's psalm. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The psalmist says, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. Another way to say it might be you are all I need. The psalmist is grateful and thank you for the life that God has given and for the future hope that there is in the Lord. Similarly, Jesus taught us not to worry about tomorrow, not to strive after what it may or may not bring, but to trust in God for what is to come. I don't know about you, but I find it hard to be content. I find it easier to pursue happiness than to be content. I find it easier to think about uh, things that I might get if I just had a little bit more, if I just worked a bit harder, if I just earned more, if I just ran faster, if I just had something new, if I just had, then life would be better, life would be easier, I would be happier. But our Bibles teach us, and the psalmist knows, that happiness comes not through wanting something more, but through contentment in Christ. That's not to say we stop striving to be better, to do something different, to gain something that is worthy of our pursuit. It just means to recognise that happiness doesn't come through something else, but through contentment in Christ Jesus. As the old song goes, count your blessings, name them one by one, it will surprise you what the Lord has done. This is what the psalmist is doing, counting the blessings that God has given him, and it's what I'd like you to try and do today. Why not make a list of the things that you're blessed with? Start with the ability, the technology to watch or listen to this message, to connect with others. And then what's next? What else has God blessed you with? It might be the seat that you're sat in, the roof over your head, I don't know. And then keep going, write them all down, see how long it takes. And when you've got your list of blessings, thank God for them. And as you thank him, ask that he might help you to be content with all that he has given.